As parties go, this one was glitzy, slick, star-studded and electric. It was also terrifying. By the time Kamala Harris took the stage at the DNC on Thursday evening, we had been told by the Obamas, Oprah, the Clintons, Hollywood and Harris herself that there is no one better to be the next American president. Because, after a week of this, I still can't tell you. After a week of the mainstream media insisting the same, I'm at a loss. I doubt I'm alone. We just witnessed not so much a convention as a coronation. This entire production, created to sell a product named Kamala, was utterly Orwellian. Had you awoken from a coma or alighted from Mars, you'd have no idea that Harris, just months ago, was considered the Democratic Party's biggest liability. Unserious, unprepared, unlikable. Nancy Pelosi, historically, has not been a fan. Speaking to Anderson Cooper on CNN in September last year, Joe Biden still the nominee. Pelosi was characteristically slippery. Cooper, is Vice President Kamala Harris the best running mate for this president? Pelosi, he thinks so, and that's what matters. Cooper, but do you think she's the best running mate, though? Pelosi, she's the Vice President of the United States. Atch, Harris's mentor and one-time lover, the nonagenarian former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, recently told Politico that she suffers from Hillary syndrome, that people don't like her. And, of course, there's that unforgettable Washington Post expose from December 2021, not quite a year into Harris's tenure as vice president, in which multiple ex-staffers allege she was a cruel boss who never buckled down, or read her briefing notes, or took responsibility for her own lack of preparedness. It's clear that you're not working with somebody who is willing to do the prep and the work, one ex-staffer said. With Kamala, you have to put up with a constant amount of soul-destroying criticism and also her own lack of confidence. So you're constantly sort of propping up a bully. Yet all we heard, this DNC, was how kind and decent Harris is, the epitome of compassion. Oh, the left's endless capacity for moral hypocrisy. That hypocrisy extends to facts, until Biden dropped out. We were told that so-called bidonomics has led to the greatest era of American prosperity ever. As of last week, not so. Harris now says she wants to create an opportunity economy, as if she hasn't been in the White House the past for years, by instituting federal price controls at grocery stores and offering $25. Zero in down payments for first-time homebuyers. It's all very communist adjacent, the kind of limousine liberalism that has led to the new proposal out of Gavin Newsom's California that would allow undocumented migrants to buy homes with interest-free state loans. Where, oh where, is the actual media? Why do I feel like I'm reading Pravda and watching state-sponsored TV? Scant outlets are being honest about Harris's ineptitude, about her policy-free acceptance speech, about yet another democratic campaign run from the metaphorical basement. Here was CBS's Gail King, officially a national embarrassment, in an actual interview with Nancy Pelosi on Thursday. How hard is it to campaign while having the burden of making history at the same time? Harris World still doesn't get it. Their fervor now evoking extreme religiosity, despite their false idolatry, rebranding and worshipping this most flippant, frivolous woman as someone who just wants to spread joy. No matter that Harris has yet to sit for a single interview or give one presser, despite all the welcoming options, King, Oprah, Rachel Maddow, all of whom would give her soft focus lighting and leave a mint on her pillow. The path that led me here these past few weeks, Harris told the crowd, was unexpected. Was it? Really? It's become increasingly apparent that Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama orchestrated a weeks long coup after that disastrous June debate, plunging the long knives into Biden's back. Everyone knew Biden was done. And that includes Harris, who callously stepped over his body in her eagerness to reach the presidential on-ramp. So don't be fooled. This party of unity and joy is still brawling. Jill and Joe Biden's hasty endorsement of Kamala, a candidate Pelosi and Obama reportedly did not want, didn't feel genuine at all, just a final F you to their backstabbers. No open primary, as Pelosi and Obama hoped, as democracy requires. But it's the Dems who are to save us from a dictator, right? It was amazing to hear DNC speakers bang on in this vein, Gov. Gretchen Whitmer speaking of Donald Trump's attempted coup when we just saw the Dems execute a real one, then yelling who the hell is in charge. As a frail, vacant Biden takes a long vacation in California. Is Kamala, as sitting VP, 
the one running things? We have no idea, because she won't tell us. Meanwhile, Michelle Obama, the party's biggest star, who reportedly agreed to speak only after Biden had dropped out, is still said to be angry at Hunter Biden's treatment of his ex-wife, her close friend Kathleen Bull. Kamala made herself scarce on Tuesday night as Michelle and Barack spoke in Chicago, reportedly in solidarity with the Bidens, who remain furious with the Obamas and Pelosi over their White House ouster. It's all so tawdry. More cynical than Harris trotting out the friend who was, as a teenage girl, sexually abused by her stepfather, a story that exists only to valorize Harris, were the survivors of our nation's worst mass shootings. Sandy Hook and Uvalde among them, dragged onto the DNC stage. And again, hasn't Kamala been in a position to do something about gun violence for the past for years? These survivors, their grief abiding and profound, were used as mere props. But the Dems are the good guys, or so we're told, over and over and over, by a media that covered up Biden's frailties and is now doing the same thing yet again. This time they're not just covering for Kamala but shoving propaganda down our throats, telling us how cogent and smart she is characteristic, she conveniently displays only behind the scenes. Just as Joe was outpacing all those young whippersnappers on his staff. It's pure fiction. Happy anniversary, Doogie. Harris trilled. Yes, she began the most important speech of her life by shouting out her husband, who we all now know cheated on his first wife with the nanny and got her pregnant. But sure, happy anniversary. It was as disingenuous as Harris claiming unequivocal support of Israel before pivoting to the plight of Gozans, then demanding all hostages be released. Harris likes to claim her foreign policy bona fides as the last person in the room before Biden decided to withdraw from Afghanistan, a full-scale failure that left 13 American service members dead. That saw desperate Afghan parents tossing their babies over barbed wire. That signaled to the world that America is in retreat, on the run, and undoubtedly led to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the October 7 terror attacks. We are in upside-down world now. The idea that dictators and terrorists fear Kamala Harris, not Donald Trump, whose presidency saw the eruption of zero foreign wars. I love our country with all my heart, Harris said. You know, our opponents are out there every day denigrating America, talking about how terrible everything is. What? It's Harris's own woke left that hates America, that aligns with Hamas and Hezbollah, and thinks this nation is intractably racist, that we are the worst colonizers on the planet. The same woke left, whose soft on crime policies have led to the destruction of major American cities, whose absolute abdication of the border, Harris, yes, the one-time border czar, has created a direct threat to homeland security. Not that any of this mattered. All anybody really wanted to know was, is Beyonce in the house? Yet another distraction, a metaphor for Harris herself, all everybody remembers is the big thing that didn't happen. Trump's candidacy, to be sure, has taken a hit since Harris was anointed. Polls are tightening, especially in battleground states, and he has been struggling to stay on message. Yet anyone who heard his speech at the RNC last month can recall that riveting beginning, delivered just days after he was hit by a would-be assassin's bullet. I will tell you exactly what happened, Trump said, and you'll never hear it from me a second time, because it's actually too painful to tell. Indelible. Harris had Eva Longoria, Carrie Washington, Morgan Freeman, Stevia Wonder, Steph Curry, Pink, John Legend, to name a few. But rather than be buoyed by such star power, she was diminished by it, lacking the gravitas and force to command her own convention. Trump, for all his faults, doesn't need supporting players. He strode out like a late-stage Elvis against his name in lights, the star of his own show, the crowd there not for Hollywood but for him. Let that be a warning to Harris, the Dems, and their media enablers, because after the high of this week, they are in for a very big letdown.